let's make the Rubio family, let them know how much we're excited to have them here with us today. Wow, well, we're so thankful again <clears throat> for the blessing and the privilege uh, to be here with you. Uh, we were here last July and had a wonderful time <clears throat> getting to know you and just uh, uh, enjoying the fellowship <clears throat> that we can have as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so again, I just want to say a huge thank you, Nancy, for uh, letting us come back and also uh, just to be able to enjoy the Christmas spirit, amen, and to celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, which we know uh, he was born uh, for a purpose, and that purpose was to one day die on a cross for our sins. And so as we begin, <clears throat> in the Bible, we find that long before the world began, God had a plan to bring redemption through Christ to all those who would choose to believe and follow him. And God knew that we would need a savior, and he knew we would need to be set free, and he made a way by sending his one and only son so that we could receive forgiveness and find new life and hope through him. And throughout the scriptures, weave through verse after verse in the Old Testament are prophecies that speak of the Christ who was to come. Bible scholars have concluded from much research that hundreds of years before Jesus was even born, more than 300 prophecies recorded or were recorded to tell of his coming. His life and journey to the cross and the power of his resurrection. These prophecies point to the exact location, circumstances, and even timing of Jesus Christ's birth. God alone is the only one who could plan those specific details and ensure they all come to pass. Jesus is the fulfillment of Scripture. He is the Word. He is the light. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And the whole message of Christmas is wrapped up in him. God's greatest gift, who came as a tiny baby with one powerful purpose to save a lost world. And so the lyrics of the following Christmas carol begin, God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. And so at this time, Ruth's going to come on up and play for us, God rest ye merry gentlemen.
Ruth is the oldest <clears throat> of our five children. She's 14 years old, and she has just a love for music. And God has just blessed her <clears throat> in an amazing way. And then Bethany is our second oldest. She's 12 years old, and she loves to play the violin. And then Marcos is next. He's 10 years old, and he's learning how to play piano. He loves to sing. And then Josiah is seven years old. And in just a few weeks, he'll be turning eight. But he's also learning how to play piano, and he just likes to play. And, uh, and then we got Gabriel. <clears throat> Gabriel's our youngest. He's the baby, and he's five years old. And he is learning how to play the violin. And so we're so grateful to the Lord for our, our children my wife, Melissa, just a, a blessing, <clears throat> a, a, a tremendous blessing in my life when I think of the wife that he's given me. And last time we were here, uh, I, I heard someone uh, mention, uh, you know, as they were, they were talking with, uh, someone was talking with Melissa, but I heard them say that, or ask Melissa if, if her and, and if Ruth and if Bethany, if they were sisters. <laughs> if Melissa... And Ruth and Bethany were sisters. And then I said, well, what does that make me, right? <laughs> but again, what a blessing when we think about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, we find a beautiful passage that says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. This next hymn is a very well-known hymn entitled Silent Night.
There's another passage of scripture very similar to the one we just read in Matthew chapter 1. And it's found in the book of Luke chapter 2. That's where we find the Christmas story. And in Luke chapter 2, jumping to verse 10, the Bible tells us, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe, lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard, it, that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And so this next hymn, uh, this next song, you're actually going to hear some Latin in it. It's Benit, Benite Adoremos, which means, O oh, come, let us adore him. And it's entitled, The Snow Lay on the Ground. So we too should worship and praise the Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in flesh. And it, it was not only a silent night when we think about the birth of Jesus, but it was also a holy night when the Holy Son of God was born. And so at this time, Melissa and I will sing, O Holy Night. Stars are brightly 
always a, a beautiful hymn when we think about uh, that night that, that Jesus was, was born in. But we also know, brethren, when it, came, when, it came, when it came to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, and especially uh, how God communicated that, excuse me, to other individuals, we know that in Scripture it talks about a star, a star that shone <clears throat> as a, a sign of confirmation that the long-awaited Messiah had been born. We find in the scriptures that there were wise men that came from the east to worship the Redeemer. In Matthew chapter 2, and verse 1, it says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Wise men seek Jesus saying, Where is he that is born, a king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, 
He demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. That star was the brightest and best. And that's the next song that we have today. <clears throat> Catch your breath after that. <laughs> the brightest and best. But just like the shepherds and wise men, we also need to proclaim our Savior's love with those around us. And as the following medley shares, I love to tell the story. We know that Jesus was born and there's a story behind it. And he came to one day die on an old rugged cross to show us his love. So at this time, Ruth and Bethany will play our Savior's love.
Amen. You know, in Isaiah chapter 9, uh, there's a, a very well-known passage of Scripture that, that talks about the birth of Jesus. We know it's an Old Testament prophecy, and uh, just a, a beautiful verse where it says, For unto us a child is born, a son is given. And then it says, And his name shall be Wonderful Counselor. You know, Jesus is wonderful. And then it says, mighty God. He has all the power that we need. And then he's also uh, eternal father, as the Spanish version puts it. And the, the author of eternity, those who trust in him can have eternal life. In John chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he's also the Prince of Peace. And so, what a beautiful hymn, Our Savior's Love. We were at a, at a church, at, an, at a church that was uh, on an Indian reservation uh, back in November uh, with the Cocopa Indians. And there was a, a, a group also of, of Navajo Indians, wonderful Christians. But as they were playing uh, these hymns, you know, they didn't call it a violin. They called it a fiddle, a fiddle. And boy, I've, I've never heard so much shouting in my life. And they weren't afraid uh, to just praise the Lord. And so at this time, also, they have another uh, duo, Power in the Blood. It's truly been a joy for us um, this morning to be with you. And this last hymn talks about joy. When we think of Jesus and his birth, it's joy to the world. The Lord has come. So I'm going to ask the family to come on up. And if you know this hymn, please sing it with us as we sing to the Lord. Joy to the world.
Wonderful. Well, oh. Is that who I think it is? <laughs> Are you finished yet? We're done. <laughs> count of three, I'll say Merry Christmas. One, two, three, Merry Christmas. And so let's go ahead and sing. Well, we're getting some candy canes here, some Christmas carols. And so why don't we sing, um, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 